man lives in a world of time and space. He lives in a spectrum of the universe. When he ventures beyond this limit, he is in the unknown, a realm where strange forces are brought into play. When man attempts to misuse these forces, he is sometimes destroyed. This is Macabre. Network presents, in special performance, Macabre. Tonight's story, The House and the Garden. Our story concerns a medieval castle in the south of France and the strange events that befell its inhabitants. About the turn of the century, its owner, Count Jacques de Marigny, died. He is among the master of his father's estate. In a sweat night, a few years later, a black caped figure strained against the storm toward a towering gray structure looming defiantly above the barren countryside. It raced across a drawbridge into the courtyard like some giant bat closing in on its victim. A moment later, the figure pounded wildly on the massive main entrance of the ancient castle and was admitted by a small, hunched servant who led the visitor into the library before a roaring fire. The man stood, patiently drying himself. Presently, he noticed the gaunt features of something else watching him from a darkened portal. For a moment, the two were motionless. Then the visitor took a step forward and asked, Good evening, monsieur. I am Inspector Bordeaux of the Prefecture of Police. I am here in answer to the urgent summons of Count Jacques de Marigny. Perhaps you'll be kind enough to inform him that I am here. Speak up, man. You cannot stand there in the shadows all evening. Good. That is better. Step over here by the fire, please. Good Lord, man. You have the look of death. What is the matter? Take me to your master at once. Where is Count? I am the Count Dumaridi. You? Thank God you've come, Inspector. Inspector Bordeaux at your disposal, sir. Now, will you explain these rather strange circumstances? Yes, in a moment. Monto? Did you call master? Uh, two glasses of brandy. Uh, brandy, sir? Yes, brandy. Brandy is in the cellar, sir. So? Well, well, the wine from the kitchen will do. Wine from the kitchen. Thank you, sir. Wine from the kitchen. Your servant is frightened, monsieur. Please be seated by the fire, Inspector. You're drenched. Oh, thank you very much. A terrible night, yes. The carriage hardly made the trip up the mountain road. But with the horses barking at the lightning, I did not expect to arrive at all. My apologies for summoning you on such a night. In so isolated a spot, a patient could die before a doctor could possibly reach him. The wine master. Oh, thank you, Monto. That will be all. Uh, a moment, if you please. Although the wine is fine, uh, the brandy would have been better. Why did you not go to the cellar for it? Go to the cellar? That will be all, Monto. You may help in the kitchen tonight. Yes, master. Thank you, master. What is wrong here, monsieur? What about this cellar he seems to be afraid of? It's a long story, inspector. Beginning with the house in the garden. The house in the garden? Yes. Uh, continue, please. I sent for you because our lives here at the castle are in danger. Oh? Who threatens you? I am not certain. Have you received notes or visitors who might lead you to believe that... Uh, Someone wants to kill you? No. I suppose I'm not making much sense. Uh, I must agree, monsieur. You are not. Will you hear me out? My dear Count, I am a busy man. Perhaps you should have called a doctor instead. No? There may be a death here tonight. You will but listen. I, I, I can explain. Very well. Uh, at any rate, that wine was tasty. Oh, uh, my glass. I haven't touched it. Uh, perhaps only a sip or two. <clears throat> I am not a drinking man, you know. Of course not. I'll have Montour bring us a bottle. Ah, very good. Now, tell me about the house in the garden. A little over ten years ago, my father died. He left me this estate of over a million francs. The provision was that I must occupy the castle and remain here to retain title. I had lived in America since childhood, since my mother left my father when I was an infant. 
It was difficult, but I pulled out stakes and moved to France. And then I met an American student in Paris, Yvette Palmer. We fell in love. It was later that I learned she had another suitor, the Duke de Bastel. She couldn't decide which of us to marry. The Duke became an enemy and threatened my life. Why did you not go to the police? Would they have believed me any more than now? Uh, hey, good point, monsieur. Uh, fine wine. Oh, yes, sir. Monto, just a sip or two, perhaps a, a glass. I am not a drinking man, you know. Yes, sir. Monto, a bottle of port. Yes, master. Uh, go on with your story. Well, one night, there was a ball here in the ballroom. I was dancing with Yvette, and everyone seemed to be happy. Guess who just arrived? Darling, nothing matters tonight except you and me. It's our friend, the Duke. Oh? I don't recall sending him an invitation. Oh, he sees us. Jacques, he's coming over. Come on. No sense in having trouble on the dance floor. Now, that is a pretty picture, is it not? Too in love. Please, don't make a scene. Are you not leading everyone to believe I have lost you? Keep your voice down. Oh, you've made a choice all right, Yvette, so it was the fortune that really mattered. You don't want, and have not, like me, a man who could give you everything... That man. That's not true. Go ahead, marry a checkbook and a place suit of clothes. That is all you are getting. It won't be a man. Uh-oh. Here goes 30 years of gentlemanly upbringing. Sorry you said that, my friend. Oh, watch out. The Duke has a knife. I'll kill you. Maybe a difference of opinion about that. He would have married me if you didn't come in. I'll assault your throat. Put my knife away, you fool. Oh, oh, you're so embarrassing. Ah. Stop it this minute! Both of you! It will be over in a moment. If you kill me, you'll never live to marry Yvette. I'm off the floor. I'm ashamed of you. Very well, Yvette. I have a better plan to settle out the Francis anyway. Do you, do you care to listen? Put the knife away. And I might. You act like two spoiled children. You're disgraced in front of all your friends. Very well. Let us go into the other room. You know, you cut my neck. Oh, it's bleeding. You made the mistake of, of getting me excited. <laughs> oh, take my handkerchief. That will stop the blood. You know, I don't think you were bluffing. I would have killed you. Well, now, what, what is this uh, plan of yours? A wager. A wager? Yes. For what stakes? One half your fortune. What? I didn't think I hit you that hard. What is the wager? The little stone house in the garden. The one used for storage. A wager I can span. Ten years alone in this house without once coming out, seeing, or talking with anyone. But it's like a prison. No windows at all. Only a door and a narrow slit at the roof for air. The stone walls are six feet thick. Oh, make it comfortable for me. Get a servant to lower a foot tray once a day through the slit in the ceiling. All I ask is that you send me anything I want to read. I will leave notes to that effect in the empty foot trays, which can be lifted out after I have eaten. And if you remain for ten years? I collect half your fortune. One more thing, though. Yvette should wait until the wager is over before choosing between us. It will be fair, then, as I will have as great a fortune as you. Mm. Suppose you leave before the time is up. <laughs> I lose and you are free. Uh, now, to make it legal, we will have a lawyer draw up contracts. The first to violate the agreement forfeits the wager. What do you say, Yvette? You mean we won't see you again for ten years? That is correct. And you must not contact me. Perhaps I will be more attractive to you when I am wealthy. What if I refuse to do this? Then I will kill you. I see. Very well. It's a deal. But remember, we'll all be bound strictly by the contract. Exactly. And we're not men of honor. <laughs> and uh, that's the story behind the house in the garden. The Duke de Bastel has been there ever since. Incredible. He's there. When does he get out? The ten years will be up at midnight, day after tomorrow. Has the Duke kept his bargain? To the letter. Anto lowers the food tray once a day, and we hear nothing from him at all. So? Then why have you summoned the police? Jacques. Uh, who is that, monsieur? My wife, Inspector. Uh, yes? I do hope I'm not interrupting. I must talk to you. Certainly, my dear. And Inspector Bordeaux, the Countess Yvette Dumarigny. How do you do? It is my pleasure, madame. Yvette, did you say? We were married five years ago. I see. She did not wait. Darling, we can't use the east wing tonight. Oh? Why not? First the cellar and now... The servants won't go near them, Jacques. What will we do? Has something happened, Countess? Yes. Please tell him, Jacques. There have been two deaths in, in as many nights. A gardener in the cellar two nights ago, and a maid last evening in the east wing. How did they die? 
Apparently natural deaths. Both elderly. Bodies were taken down to a village doctor. Said he could find nothing suspicious. Uh, did you expect to find uh, anything suspicious? Well, you see... Inspector, I... there is more. Two deaths in two nights under natural conditions. Probably coincidence. Nothing else. Again, why have you called the police? The drums. Drums? We heard them before the gardener died, and again last night before we found Suzette. What manner of drum? The kind you might hear in a jungle. <laughs> Someone is playing the game with you. Who? Yvette, Bonto, and a dozen other trusted servants live here with me. There's no one else except the Duke in the house in the garden. Pardon me, Master. Here is wine. Uh, yes, Monto. Put it by the inspector, please. Yes, Master. I do not mean to hear. I must tell you, servants do not think Duke's still out there. What? Last three days, Duke not touched food on tray. The tray's come back full. Perhaps the man is ill. Servants think he find out Miss Yvette Mary Count. Maybe he escaped, kill everyone with voodoo drums. Voodoo? One of the provisions was that he be allowed to read anything he desired. For the past few years, he's requested books on high and low magic, sorcery, witchcraft, and the like. So, and uh, when did you first hear these uh, drums? Two nights ago. We had just gone to bed when they began to beat. Did you make an attempt to locate them? No, Inspector. We thought one of the servants was playing on them. They found a gardener in the cellar the next morning. Servants very frightened. It is easy enough to clear this up. Give me the key. I will open the house in the garden. No. Not until midnight, the day after tomorrow. But it's important to know if the Duke is in there. The contract states I will lose my entire fortune if I do that. We must wait. Couldn't you send for guards to protect us? Protect you from what, monsieur? Voodoo drums? <laughs> Inspector Bordeaux would be the laughingstock of all France. No, my dear Count and Countess. You have made a childish wager with an equally childish Duke. And now you are allowing your nerves to play fanciful tricks on you. I cannot help you. My coat, you will play. <laughs> The road back may be washed out, Inspector. It's a terrible night. Indeed, yes. Yes, it is a bad night. You are welcome to stay the night. There really is something wrong here. Maybe you can find it. If drums come again, servants leave, I think. Mm. In Inspector, have you tried our grape wine? Best stock we've had in years. Ah, the wine. Indeed, yes. Put me up. Just for the night. Perhaps this does bear some looking into. Fine. Uh, two bottles of grape, Monto. Two bottles of grape, Master. Uh, good, Monto. Uh, mind you, only a sip or two. Perhaps uh, a glass. Remember, I am not a drinking man. Thank you for remaining, Inspector. Let us retire now to the safety of our rooms. I know that you'll recognize the danger here. If the drums beat again tonight. Inspector Bordeaux here. Yeah? Our midnight drummer went around the corner. With Ace, we might apprehend the scoundrel. Oh, Inspector, we got... Either way, Inspector, you have the lantern. I was almost asleep when I heard the sound. You were very wise to summon me. This is either a practical joke or a ghastly plan of murder. Look, a shadow around the bend. Hurry. Wait, wait. That tapestry, it's moving. What is behind it? An alcove. Our phantom is probably in there. Careful now. Now, up. <laughs> Who is this girl, monsieur? Marie, one of my wife's maids. Is she? She's gone. A dreadful look of fright. Were the others like this? Yes. No signs of violence. Oi! He's getting away! Oh. I must have gone up the West Tower. I'll hand the lantern. I'll lead the way. Through the door! A man could fall to his death in the sort of stairway. Here, take my hand, Countess. Thank you, Inspector. See anything up ahead? Not yet. We're almost at the top landing. And we'll have him cornered. Be careful, Jacques. Just a little farther. Ah! Watch it. Broken step. Go ahead, we're all right. Huh. Hey, have a gun, just in case. Easy does it now. Shine the lantern around. It has to be up here somewhere. 
behind that post. A shot! A shadow moved! Where is that? You! Come out from behind that post. Now we know where you are. Have a gun? I can't see a thing. Come on the way. There's something hiding right over there. It moved again. Stop or I'll shoot! No, no, I, I didn't do it. Can you raise your hand? No, no, you must believe me. She must want to go out there. Look out for the open window behind you! <laughs> Nothing further can be done here. We'll take care of the body in the morning. I suggest we retire to our rooms and uh, try to get some rest. Oh, so relieved it's finally over. Aren't you, Jacques? I wouldn't fail to go to my door. Why? Because, my dear, you are wrong. The real killer is still at large. <laughs> Coming, Monto. Hold on. Be right there. Good morning, Master. Have bad news. Huh? How's that? Servants hear about Marie and Francois last night. All leaving. Why? They can't leave us here all alone way out here. They say Kursan Castle. Everyone die. They, they not stay. Motona like voodoo drums either. Where is the inspector? He having breakfast downstairs. Tell him we'll be right down. Yes, Master. But hurry. Inspector plan open house in garden. Ah, the last breakfast the cook made before she left. May I share it with you? I'll have only coffee, please. And uh, you with that? Oh, yes, just coffee. Mm. Monto says you plan to open the house in the garden. Indeed. It is about time. Or do you both want to die in your sleep? Then you believe there is someone in the castle causing this? Not necessarily. Oh, how did you know it wasn't Francois? The killer we were following had already passed the tower room when we found the dead maid. He couldn't have come back without being seen. Francois found Marie before we did. Afraid we would mistake him for the murderer, he, like a coward, ran up the tower. He accidentally fell out the window. Master, the servant's now gone. Only we left. All right, Monto. Inspector, I have a plan. Uh, give me one more night. One more night, monsieur. May find all of us dead in our beds. There is a madman loose. I cannot risk it. Monto can guard Yvette in the castle tonight. You and I will take up watch by the house in the garden. What do you say? I think we should leave this place immediately. Yvette, how about it? One more night? Oh, I'm frightened. But if Monto will promise not to leave me. Monto guard Countess with life. There we are. Now, how about it? Well, it seems I am outvoted. Very well, then. One more night. However... I cannot guarantee you will be alive in the morning. The storm has passed. But the night is disagreeable, no? Yes. Turn up the lantern, please, Inspector. It's very dark. There. That is better now. This is the house in the garden, no? Right. Made of stone. About 30 feet square. No windows. So you mentioned. Hmm. Very quiet in there. Like a tomb, eh? In a way. Here's a stone door. I have the only key. Without it, we'd have to blast to get in. Hasn't been open since we locked him up. Uh-huh. And that opening near the door? That's where his food trays are lowered. Six inches by 24, just a slit. A foreboding prison. If it is still a prison. I strongly advise you to open it up for your own safety. He couldn't have escaped. Who beat the drums? They came from the castle. Not here in the garden. What do you think? You wouldn't accept my explanation. My dear Count, please do not expect me to believe in witchcraft or voodoo. This is 1910, the 20th century. Then we'll hear the drums no more. The Duke is there, and only Yvette Manteau remain in the castle, right? Exactly. There is no one else left to beat them, if you have assumed correctly. I suppose we are reasonably safe. Perhaps we are. What's that? The drums from the castle. <laughs> Get that! Quickly, we may be too late to save her!
Stop. Cellar door. Drums came from the cellar. I think so. I will go first with the lantern. There's nothing down here except rows of wine casks. We will be at the bottom in a moment. You see anything? Only wine casks. Listen. What is dripping? Wine? Hardly. Come on. Dripping is growing louder. Perhaps around this corner. There's something on the floor up there. What? Wait. Monto! Is he dead? Uh, no. A blow on the head. Monto, quickly. Where is the countess? I protect countess. Someone hit me with drum. I dragged you into the I... cellar. But where is the countess? Inspector, the dripping. It's blood. Indeed. Overhead, something lying on that wine cask. Raise the lantern. It's a woman, the Countess. She's alive. Her face is turning toward. Good Lord. What happened to her face? Yvette! Oh, no! They didn't. Oh, God, they didn't do this. I won't believe. She is dead, my friend. This will not help her. I know. He couldn't stand my The Duke. <laughs> it's really not. Let's go. I'll get the key. Yes, I advise you to calm yourself. Where are you going? To the Duke. Yes, to the Duke. We'll do what he wants at last. We'll open the house and the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Most unusual. This door has been locked for years. He could not escape. Monsieur, I am completely baffled. I confess, I do not know who has harmed you. Monto, help me with this key. Yes, master. It turned other way. Oh, all right. Turn. There. Inspector, give us a hand. Here we go, monsieur. Door swings out. Here we go now. Pull. Oh. 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 Let me go first. I am armed. Bring the lantern, Monto. Yes, Inspector. What do you see? Is he there? I do not see him as yet. Shine the lantern on, Monto. Well? He is not here. He has escaped. What? I believe I understand everything at last, Count de Marigny. Quickly. Where is he, Inspector? Give me time to think. He could only have escaped with the help of one person, the man who brought his food. You accuse me? Yes. No. Monteau used your key to open the door. The Duke escaped and planned the voodoo drum deaths with the help of Monteau, who did the actual killing. No. Monteau? But why? The Duke promised him a part of your fortune. They hoped to frighten you into opening the house early in order to collect your entire estate. And they have succeeded, monsieur. You lose everything. The Duke broke his agreement first by escaping. Only after I learned Yvette had not waited for marriage as agreed. Now have you not opened the door and found me here? You, the Duke de Bastille? My dear Count. <laughs> have I changed so much in ten years? You promised you not tell. The beard, I see. I intercepted your summons for the police and masqueraded as Inspector Bordeaux. Then I persuaded you to open the house in the garden where you found that the Duke had gone. <laughs> Inspector, the door is closing. We will try to die. No, stop. Don't close the door. We can't get out. We'll die. No, don't do it, Count. heard Macabre, a special Far East Network presentation. In our cast were John Buey as Inspector Bordeaux, 
Walt Shelton as the Duke de Bastel, Shirley Ashey as Countess Yvette, William Verdier as Count Jacques de Marigny, and Airman First Class James Conley as Monteau. Technical supervision by Airman First Class Larry Clemens. Special sound patterns by Air Force Sergeants Bob Eddy and Newell Stewart. This is Air Force Sergeant Al LePage speaking. Macabre was written and directed by William Verdier. Macabre comes to you each week at this time through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Mm-hmm.